Hey, good afternoon, folks. Good evening, wherever you're at. This is a, another series in the program that a Bible teacher, I'm your Bible pastor, uh, teacher, Pastor Russell Shepard. We're in the second part of a series that we started uh, called How to uh, Instructions, God's, God's Instructions, How to Study Your Bible. And by way of review, we looked at several verses. One was 2 Timothy 3.16 uh, that said, All scriptures give my inspiration of God. And it's proper for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness that the man of God might be perfect and thoroughly furnished in all good works. The instruction of Paul to Timothy, a pastor who was at Ephesus, and how Paul uh, instructed Timothy through the ministry of God the Holy Spirit from the glorified Christ of how the local assembly should be run. One was the issue of all the scriptures from Genesis to Revelations, from Genesis to Malachi, Matthew to Revelations. The Bible declares to be the Word of God. Now, that's the biggest issue that you have to overcome first, to believe that God did write His Word, and God did preserve His Word. And folks, today for us, as English-speaking people in America, the Word of God has been preserved in the King James Bible. Now, not written in the King James Bible. That, the, the doctrine we've studied that of inspiration is how God wrote His Word, and it was written in Kone Greek. But God in his wisdom knew that you and I in 2019, May the 3rd, would be uh, reading English. Uh, that's not my native tongue in terms of my ancestors and yours either. The country wasn't formed or formulated with the different immigrants that have come here since the time of this inception. But God Almighty knew we would be here. He's God. Uh, there's a verse I, I was thinking about I'm teaching on. A Sunday where the Lord Jesus Christ is called the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and, and the ending. And so he's from the beginning, and from creation past, from everlasting to everlasting, Micah says, thou art God. So when we study the Bible, folks, as, as your Bible teacher, I'm a Bible believer. And one of the keys to the Bible is not only 2 Timothy 3.16, but in the same book in the previous chapter, in 2 Timothy 2.15, the Apostle Paul gave instructions to Timothy to study, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed. And he uses the term that he, he calls, the Holy Spirit calls, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, to rightly divide the word of truth is recognize that God had more than one program in the Bible at one time. To, to intelligently understand the Bible, and you remember our title is God's, God's Instructions on How to Study the Bible. Not mine, not yours, not your pastor, not the religious system you might be a part of or not a part of. But God has a process that he's laid out in a doctrinal structure that's a biblical doctrinal theology of how God's word should be studied from Genesis to Malachi, as I said earlier, from Matthew to Revelations, or Genesis to Revelation, the 66 books of the, uh, of the Bible that God the Holy Spirit is said to be the author of, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and following. And also, God the Holy Spirit preserved the word of God. He, he, keep, he kept it. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ said that heaven and earth may pass away, but my words never. So the issue of what we do every week is we study God's word, and our goal and our desire is to help you understand how to study it for yourself. So part of that last, last time we met was the issue of studying the Bible dispensationally. In other words, to recognize that, that the word of God, as you see on the board there, it, it, it's laid out in the time chart. And folks, uh, man, I can't tell you, probably 30, 33 years ago, I, I have a book by a guy named Clarence Larkin that had a bunch, it has charts in it, just like this. And I looked at it, and it was like the most puzzling thing I had ever seen, but I wanted to understand the Word of God. So I was eventually introduced to rightly dividing the Word of, word of Truth, the, the study of dispensation, to make the distinctions that God makes in His Word. Folks, unfortunately, dispensationalism and, and, and recognizing distinctions have been lost. Two things have been attacked by the adversary, by Satan. One is the Word of God. Satan's initial attack on the Word of God with Eve was, have God say it. He, he raised a question uh, of doubt to attack the veracity of God's Word. But as God's Word has been written over time, there, there's a program in the Bible that's talking to the, about the earth and the reconciliation of it. We'll look at some of those verses that's written to the nation of Israel, God's earthly people. But there's an unprophesied program in the, in the Bible, a un, what Paul calls the mystery, a, a, a hidden wisdom that God has. 
that after the cross of Christ at Calvary, they explain God's eternal purpose. Paul's epistles come along, the 13 epistles written by Paul, from the Apostle Paul, from Romans to Philemon, as the capstone to what the Bible, people call, use the term progressive revelation. The Word of God wasn't written at one time. It was written in, 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 over time, uh, 1,500 years, to be honest about it, by 40 different authors. And, and you know something. You know something by the continuity of the doctrinal structure in the Word of God that a divine being had to write it. There are things written in the Old Testament, written by Moses to Israel, that are prophetic issues about the course and history of Israel uh, as a nation. And there were things that are written by Moses in Leviticus 26 that until you see it laid out in Judges to Malachi, and, and specifically in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ in early Acts, and then fulfilled in Hebrews and Revelations, nobody can know, no human author can know, for instance, about the prediction of the cross in Isaiah 53 or Psalms 22 or Genesis 3.15, things that God himself will come in the form of the person of Christ, Israel's Messiah, and down that cross to pay for their sins, to the issue of redemption, the issue of uh, uh, ra ransom them out of the hands of him that was stronger than him in Isaiah 49, it says, talking about Satan. They had become, Israel had become lawful captives, and their Messiah came and he provides on the cross of Calvary a, uh, a mechanism that gets them out of their predicaments, the mechanics of their salvation is that cross, folks. Those things are predicted, but until you get to the Apostle Paul, and, and begin to read his epistles, the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven's glory gave Paul a realm of knowledge and information that had been kept secret since the world began. That's what we're going to study today. We're going to see that the, the words on the page are so simple and clear about understanding that God has two different programs, one for the nation of Israel and one for the church, the body of Christ, which I'm a part of. I am not spiritual Israel, folks. Uh, God Almighty set Israel aside for a time and a season. He, he blinded them in part. So anybody that's saying they're spiritual Israel, are, they're in violation to the Word of God as it's taught in Romans 9, 10, and 11. Uh, matter of fact, in Ephesians, when we get there, Paul says, I speak, he's, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. The same person that said that in Ephesians chapter 1 said in Romans chapter 11, verse 25, don't be ignorant of this mystery. I would not, have, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own conceit that a blindness in part has happened to Israel. Notice what he says. A blindness in part, in part, partial blindness has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Folks, the fullness of the Gentiles is the completion of God's uh, secret purpose, the mystery of Christ, that the body of Christ will be formed and will be taken out of here. First Thessalonians calls it to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And then God's program will transition back to Israel's prophecy program. And the last week on Daniel's calendar is called the 70th week. The last week is it's called the tribulation period. Folks, you don't have to be confused about your Bible and understanding it. You can understand it, but it's a way to study it. And that's 2 Timothy 2.15, to rightly divide it. Study to show yourself approved unto God a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now notice this is called the word of truth. It's not called a, a, the word of maybe truths or half truths. The Bible declares itself to be the word of truth. And the reason it's the word of truth is because the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth in the book of John. And the Lord Jesus Christ, when he's looking at the scriptures that he had, written by the Old Testament prophets, he called it God's word. He said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my words never. And then he told the adversary in Matthew chapter 3 that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God. Now, I know there's people listening to me today in the audience who know and believe that Jesus Christ is God's son. Matter of fact, you know that verse says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And you know the verse that talks about Jesus Christ says in John chapter 8, when he's talking to the religious leaders in Israel, he said, before Abraham was, you know what's the term he uses there? He says, I am. That word, I am, that terminology, I am, comes from Exodus chapter 3, when God is talking to Moses, and Moses asked the question, who, uh, about the children of Israel, and asking about God's name. He says, you tell them, I am that I am, have sent thee. And then he says, I am. And Israel understood that term that was, it was spoken about God Almighty. 
that God Almighty in the person of Jesus Christ comes and he speaks to his people. That's their Messiah who comes. He's I am. So the Lord Jesus Christ is God in human forms, folks. And if he said in Matthew chapter 3 that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God, and he lied, then God's a liar. But I'll tell you what, God's not a liar. You are if you don't believe that. And so am I. Paul said, let God be true, Romans chapter 3, and every man a liar. So anyway, that's not my subject today. My subject is how God gives us instructions to study his word. So that's just a review, folks. And when we looked at the terminology that's given to the Apostle Paul, that he uses specific terms to explain 2 Timothy, uh, Timothy 2.15, the terms he uses is a past, a present, and a future. He uses the term in Ephesians chapter 2. Turn with me in your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 2. The verse is not going to appear on the screen, but I want to just review this. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. We saw that there's a program called Times Past. Paul says that at that time you were Gentiles in the flesh, called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision uh, in the flesh made by hands. That at that time, and I'm trying to get this verse, so I'm quoting it. Let me just get there. So you can see I'm turning to the page. Verse 11, he says, For at that time ye were our Christ, talking about the Gentiles, being alien from, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. That's verse 12. Uh, having no hope without God in the world. And that's times past. We have it on the board here. Times past. It's before the dispensation of grace with the Apostle Paul. But in verse 13, there's a change with two little words in God's program, a, a dispensational change. We calls it but now. And but now you who are far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. That's the cross. For he is our peace, verse number 14 says, who have broken down the middle wall partition that was between us. That's the law program. Verse 15, and having abolished in this flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments to contain in ordinances, for the making of himself of, of the twain, that's Jew and Gentile, one new man, so making peace. Folks, the one new man is part of the body of Christ in the dispensation of grace, the mystery program. In verse 7, he talks about that in the ages to come, there's a past program of God, there's a future pro a present program of God today, the but now, and there's a future program of God called the ages to come, verse 7. And yet, also, the program of God in times past and the program of God in the future, ages to come, if you take out the parenthetical program, or the parentheses, and just go from Acts chapter 1, verse 8, all the way over to Hebrews chapter uh, 1 to Revelations, and you put those together, you have Israel's history. What's not known by the prophets of the Old Testament is the dispensation of grace, the mystery program. That's right divine, that's right to divide the word of truth, according to God's word. It simplifies the Bible. It makes the Bible simple. I didn't say it's not difficult sometimes to, to read and understand, but it's, it's simple to understand it. The problem is believing it. So we hope that you're like the Bereans in Acts 17, that they receive the word of God, what we're giving right now, with all readiness in mind. When Paul went to, to Thessalonica, and he says they, the Bereans were more noble than they in Thessalonica, and that they received the word of God, Acts 17, 11, with all readiness in mind. That meant they were open-minded. And they searched the scriptures daily to see whether these things be so. Are you a Berean? Do you search the scriptures to see whether these things be so? And it's fascinating, he uses the word daily. Now, most believers, most Christians, uh, don't open their Bibles until they get in the building on Sunday where their services are held. And then they might, I don't know where you go. I really don't. And I'm not talking about on a midweek service where a lot of people don't go or Sunday school where people use books. But you take your Bible with you. Do, do you take your Bible to your church? If you don't, you should. How do you know what the man or whoever is up there speaking is saying if it's written in the Word of God? And if, it's, if, if it is written in the Word of God, is it a, in the correct order of where God places it? So people don't take things out of their contextual setting or their doctrinal or dispensational setting and turn it into a, the Word of God into a lie. Because let me say this to you, folks. The person behind the lie program is the devil. And, and what we're doing today, Satan doesn't want you to know this. 
But some people in the audience ask the same question. My wife asked, and I asked, and most everybody I talk to, they ask the question, for, ask that God show them his word, that you can understand the word of God, folks. And so this is a providential answer to you right now, where God Almighty is using me as an instrument to speak to you about the question that you raised in your heart. And you know what I know, too? Only you and God know that. I'm just fascinated. Everybody I know who comes to understand right division has asked that question. Lord, I want to understand your word. I asked it. I asked it over in May 1974. That's a long time ago, but I came to understand it through God sending men to help me to understand how to study it. And as I begin to study it, the book just opens up. So I hope you're, you're one of those people who are just not curious about what we're doing, but you're serious about knowing God and, and knowing him through his word. Now, there's an audience out there of lost people that sit here, that I know you're in the audience, saying, what is this guy talking to me? So I'm talking to you. I'll do a Pat Robinson stuff. I'm talking to somebody in the office, audience that's listening. I don't know who you are, but you're, you're wondering why the chaos is going on in this world today. Folks, God Almighty is in control. And the reason God allows things to go on, let me, let me say something to you, it's not in my notes. It's not in what I plan to do, but so I know that God, the Holy Spirit, wants me to share this. Paul's program, or the program today that's given to Paul by the Lord Jesus Christ, is called the mystery program. And it's called the dispensation of the grace of God. Acts chapter 20, verse 24. But it's also called the long suffering of God, which is salvation. That's what Peter calls it, 2 Peter chapter uh, 3. He says, even the, 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 the wisdom given to our brother Paul uh, as in all his epistles, that's Romans and Philemon, they explain why the wrath of God didn't come. Listen, God Almighty revealed to Paul the mystery, and Paul taught it to the apostles. And what the, the term he uses is the long suffering of God, which is salvation. Folks, God Almighty allows this wicked world to go on in this wickedness. So a sinner like you or a sinner like me can receive the salvation that comes through Christ at Calvary by grace through faith alone. So as long as the Lord is long-suffering towards this world, then the dispensation of grace goes on. When the long-suffering is over, folks, God Almighty takes the body of Christ out of here, and you're back in prophecy, and you're in the time of God's wrath and his judgment. It's called the 70th week, it's called Jacob's trouble. It's called, the Lord called it the great tribulation period. You do not want to be here when that happens. You haven't seen anything in this world yet, because what we see now is what Paul calls in Romans chapter 8. He calls it the sufferings of this present time. And he says the whole creation groans and travail, watch this one, in pain together until now. He's explaining why the world goes on in rebellion and defiance and you see ungodly men increase and wickedness increase. But that's not because God doesn't care. That's because he's long-suffering. He does care. He's holding back his wrath, folks. And he's offering to every man, woman, boy, and girl but Paul, every one of his Paul's epistles starts off with this phrase, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not teaching my lesson, but that's okay, because you need to hear the things that were put on my heart to share with you. So I know it's God working through me, folks. We don't, we don't just, my wife and this, I just don't come in here to spend a half an hour just, you know, talking uh, frivolous stuff through the screens of a TV program. We made a commitment to serve the Lord and the community that we're in in Ann Arbor, Washtenaw County, through this ministry. It's, it's a ministry. It's a ministry of love and service. It's the love of God that's motivating us to do this. That, that's what it is. And this is and the grand privilege of serving him in this capacity is a real joy. We don't, we don't ask for any money. We don't get any compensation for this. We're, we're servants of the Most High God. And what a privilege and honor it is for you to be able to spend some time with us in studying the Word of God. Now, let's get back to our lesson, God's instructions on how to study your Bible. I think last time we looked at Luke chapter 1, verse 67, and I wanted to do that because in times past, you see information about the prophetic program. I'm not going back on those verses, but in Luke chapter 1, verse 67 to 69, 79, Zacharias begins to talk about a term that he explains about the coming of the Messiah based on Israel's time calendar. That it was time for the Messiah to show up in Israel's program, in Israel's history. 
And he said the things that he was talking about was spoken by the mouths of all God's holy prophets since the world began. Come over to Acts chapter 3. And Peter uses the same term, Acts chapter 3. Now what my purpose is, is to show through the scriptures that there's two distinct different programs in the Bible. Now don't believe me, believe the word of God. Don't take it from me, you get out your Bible. And by the way, we always say this too. If you watch any of these programs for the half an hour uh, typically we're on, we ask you to do two things. Have a King James Bible and have a, a piece of paper and a pencil so you can write down these scriptures and go back and study them. And God the Holy Spirit, just pray and ask God to show you the truth. And I guarantee you he will. In Acts chapter 3, when Peter, after the day of Pentecost, uh, he, he, he begins to talk about to the nation about this time of repentance and God setting up his kingdom. And he says to the nation of Israel in Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Now, this is to the nation of Israel. And by the way, it's fascinating, folks. When Peter says in, in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, it's recorded in Leviticus 26, verse 40 and 41, that when the nation of Israel confesses their sins before God, they, they repent. The nation has to have a national repentance for a national salvation. Because at this time, the nation of Israel is not the head of the nations, they're the tail. And they're under what the Lord calls the times of the Gentiles, the Gentile rule over the nation of Israel, God's, uh, God's covenant people. Watch what he says. Repent you, therefore. He's talking to the nation of Israel. And be converted. By the way, he's not talking to Gentiles. Peter wouldn't have anything to do with Gentiles at this time. But he's talking to the nation of Israel. This is a second offering to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist started back here, and before the coming of Christ, he told the nation of Israel to repent. And he told them to come confessing their sins. And the Lord picked up that call in Matthew 3. Now here's Peter. And by the way, John the Baptist represented God the Father through the prophets. The Lord Jesus Christ represented God the Son. He was here himself. Now this is the ministry of God the Holy Spirit. And folks, the nation of Israel, I'll just tell you here, they're going to reject this call. They're going to reject this call, and there's going to be some wicked things they do to the remnant called the little flock, Peter and the rest of the uh, apostles and the nation of Israel. And when we see Stephen stand up over here, and it's not on the board, they're going to commit the unpardonable sin, folks, in that program. Anyway, that's a whole different story. Verse number 19, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which was before preached unto you, whom the heavens, now watch the term, must receive until the rest, the times of the restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouths of all his holy prophets. What does the next part of that verse say? Since the world began. That's from Genesis all the way over here to Revelations. God had had a message that he spoke about the coming kingdom, about the king and his kingdom coming, the establishment of God's authority on earth. That's why the Lord prayed in Matthew 6. He told his disciples to pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, where? On earth as it is in heaven. Now, honestly, folks, does it look like God's will being, is being done today on earth? I mean, you can't help but turn on, on the news at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, and the first thing you see is chaos, murders, mayhem. Do you think that's God's kingdom? Well, the Lord talks about ruling with a rod of iron. Now, my producer's telling me I'm out of time. But I want you to see some things in this verse since we're there. Verse 19, Peter tells the nation to repent and they'll be converted. That means they'll go into this kingdom as a new nation. Then he says this, that your sins may be blotted out. Sins may be blotted out. Let me tell you the distinction. The nation of Israel's sins will be blotted out at the second coming of Jesus Christ when they as a nation are born again. The believer today in the dispensation of grace, your sins are blotted out the moment you trust Christ at Calvary. That's different. Today is an individual salvation. In this program, it's a national salvation. When you're dealing with the nation of Israel and their 12 tribes, it makes up a theocracy. And watch what he says. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence, notice that, the presence of the Lord. Folks, that word, what he's saying there is the Lord will literally be there. He'll be in their presence. When Jesus Christ comes back, he'll be sitting on a throne in Jerusalem 
in the presence of the nations, their Messiah. So when the presence of the Lord comes, the restitution of all things is the restoring of God's purpose. Listen to me. That goes back to Adam in Genesis 1 and 2. This is not a, this is not a make-believe kind of thing. This is, this is real. This book is real, and God's word is true. But people don't teach it. So how would you know? I often tell my wife, when I went to Sunday school years ago, and I was lost, by the way, they made the Bible seem like a comic book full of stories. And I'm 65 years old. Do you know how much worse it's gotten today? The men scoff at the word of God. And yet God has left information about his word of what his prophetic program is. Watch what he says. Verse 21, whom the heavens must receive, the heavens must receive Jesus Christ unto the restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouths of all his holy prophets since the world began. Come on to Acts 7 before we close. Acts 7. Watch what happened when the heavens, is, are, are, it's time for the Lord Jesus Christ to be sent back by God the Father. Acts chapter 7, the end of the passage, verse number 54, talking about Stephen's. When they heard this, the Jewish uh, apostate believers, they were cutting their heart and they gasped on him, that Stephen's with their, their teeth. But watch what he says, but be, he being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Uh, he, Stephen gets a vision in the heavens and the heavens depart. God pulls back that, that curtain like a scroll and he can see in the third heaven and he sees Jesus standing. Now in Acts 2, we didn't show you that, but the Lord is sitting. He has a different position in Acts 2 where Peter says, David is not ascending into heaven, but the Lord, God the Father said to the God the Son, sit in my right hand until I make your enemies my foot, your footstool. And when the Lord stands up, he's coming back to make his enemies his footstool. But folks, it didn't happen. In Acts chapter 9, unexpectedly, the Lord appeared historically on the road to Damascus to Saul of Tarsus, and he didn't come back to make his enemies his footstool. So he came back to save the chief of sinners. <laughs> By grace through faith plus nothing. He began, and the Lord revealed to Paul the mystery program, and he went back to the heaven, and he sat back down. He sat down indicating that there's peace with God today, folks. The wrath's been held back for a time in the season. Now, that was a lot. And it wasn't prepared. But I know it was clear. You just have to go home and study to see whether these things be so. Folks, the next time we meet again, we're going to start in Acts chapter 3, and we're going to pick up, and I'm going to transition until the but now period. The book of Acts is a transitional book to take you from the kingdom of God program, the gospel of the kingdom, to the gospel of the grace of God. From the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the end of that, until Romans, Paul's epistle, where a new dispensation starts with the Apostle Paul. This is Pastor Russell Shepherd. Till we meet again, Maranatha. Thank you.